imitate that. And then when you work with your partner, you will feel how easily they go or how hard it is to knock them over. And they can give you insight into what it felt like for them. And that's how you're going to figure out um, how to have these massively fast and beautiful trips. So he's telling me to put more emphasis on my hand and less on the foot that's trying to kick his leg out. Because honestly, the foot is just kind of pinning the standing leg in place, and then the hand is kind of twisting the body around it. It's like that schoolyard thing where someone like crouches behind someone and you shove them. Your foot is just posting the standing leg in place so that they can't correct their balance as you start to knock them over with your hand. That was missing for me up until this point. <laughs> He's laughing at me again because I keep turning myself. <laughs> there we go. So I actually have to step, when you take the two little baby steps, I have to step right next to his foot. And I'm too close to him again. <laughs> there we go. So I understood something just now about pinning the foot. When I'm clinching, I trip people like this. I pin their leg, their outside leg, with mine, and then I just twist them around it. And he's like, yes, it's totally the same thing. So conceptually, I understand how this is working now and how the upper body kind of just twists them around the like spot that you've nailed them to. He's saying you can do the same trip on a knee as well. So if someone comes to knee you, you can kick out their standing leg exactly the same way that he's teaching me with a kick. Dangwat. If you guys learn no other word in Thai, that one's important. It means timing and rhythm. So using the correct timing on something is paramount importance. So it's not how hard you do something, and it's not necessarily how fast you do something, it's those things together in Zhangwat, which is having the right timing that. for when their weight is coming forward with a knee or a kick, and you're taking their leg out from under them. You're starting to feel something. <laughs> I'm still doing like a pirouette Come on thing. Now. Um, you guys might notice that I keep whying to crewman up after putting him on the ground as he's coming back up. Um, he, this is a sign of respect to him because he's letting me do this thing over and over and over to him. So I'm trying to be polite in the context of him letting me put him on the ground over and over again. So if you are lucky enough to have a trainer and honestly just go train with man up, if you're lucky enough to have a trainer who allows you to do this, just show them respect that they're um, letting you kind of throw them on the ground over and over again. <laughs> So now I'm mixing it up a little bit again, so I'm trying to like block and put a little bit of my own rhythm in it, which is really good because we've isolated out this technique so many times that my brain has kind of lost track of how it goes. The way that you put the jangwat, the timing and the rhythm that he's talking about into these movements is to then come outside of the context of the drill a little bit work your way into that distance and the kick, and then kind of like fill in the blanks into the way that you'd be moving the yeah, So there I felt it, because we started yeah, moving around a little bit more, and I stopped overthinking it. So here he's, he's saying again, it's the same thing with a knee. You're just at a closer distance. So see how he just, instead of catching the knee, because you catch the kick, you don't catch the knee, you actually just kind of like scoot it along the side and then trip them in exactly the same way. <laughs> He's still laughing at me because I keep turning myself more than I'm turning him. He's still going down, which is okay. But the reason he's telling me not to turn myself but to turn him is I'm basically making it harder for myself than it needs to be. See how he just shoves my... My knee is coming towards the center line and he just kind of like shoes it away. He kind of catches it before it reaches him and shoes it to the side. 
And because it's coming across my body, that's going to make it so much easier for him to knock me down. It's basically replacing what he was doing with his hand coming across my shoulder for the kick and putting it down on the knee instead.